collars are difficult to make. I know. <laughs> I goofed quite a bit in my how to make a button up video. So I've gone back to my machine, refined my technique, and well, here's how I make a better collar. My name's Cornelius Quiring. Oh, mmm. Gorgeous logo. Let's get into it, Ed Inkhorn. First, I need an actual measurement of how big I need my collar. And there's two ways to do it. First, I can simply take a measurement off a shirt that I already like the fit of. I'm going to measure from here all the way across to here. And I do that by just simply walking it out. Alternatively, I can also measure my neck and I want the measuring tape to sit where the collar is going to end up. So nice and low. And I want it to be a little loose because we don't want this to be a squeeze. The general rule is being able to fit two fingers in there. And then I take that measurement plus the width of one of my plackets because, well, the two plackets are going to overlap. So in my case, the placket is an inch. So neck measurement plus an inch. I'm going to draft the collar band first. And so I take that neck measurement and I divide it by two. I'm going to mark that out. And now a collar band tends to be thicker at the back and then it goes a little bit narrower at the front. So I got to decide how tall I want the tallest part to be. I'm going to go with an inch and a half. It also curves up just a little bit in the front here, just so that it lays a little flatter against the neck. I'm going to go up three quarters of an inch with mine and I'm going to go in yeah, roughly four inches. And now I just draw in that curve. Now, if I make this curve greater, it's going to sit in more once it's sewn. And if I make this curve flatter, it's going to sit out more. So I can play around with it as much as I want. These two numbers I measured here aren't hard facts. They're just personal choices I made. Adjust as you see fit. Five inches, actually, just for a more gradual curve. Adding this curve here, of course, changes my bottom length here. So I need to walk it out to find where my half neck measurement ends up on that curve. And it's basically at the same point, so all is well. I'm then going to line up the end of my ruler with my curve. Draw in that line to make it perpendicular to the end of the curve. I'm going to mark off where the one inch point is right there. Here again, one inch was my choice. To finish, I just make that point come in and curve around to meet the top of my collar band. I'm going to trim this out, duplicate it, but add an extra inch on the second one so that I can tape the two together. There we go. I now have my collar band. Get to know me over on my website. I'm going to use this now to take the measurement for the top collar flappy over bit. And I'm going to measure from the center here at the top all the way to the edge out here. Once again, I do that by walking it out. I need to leave room for the collar stand to overlap. So this flappy bit needs to sit back a little bit. I like to go back three quarters of an inch, but of course, it can be adjusted for style preferences. I mark out that spot, draw in my line, I'm going to draw in a perpendicular line here because the end's going to end up having a bit of a bell shape. For the center back here of the flappy over bit, I need it to be the height of the center back of my collar band 
plus enough fabric, because of course it's going to be sewn in and flap over, I like to do an extra quarter of an inch. So I did mine at one and a half inch, so I'm going to do one and three quarters of an inch. Draw that line in as well. This is the side that's going to be sewn into the collar band here. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch to the end here and then just curve that to meet that point. Nice gentle curve. Now this is what will eventually be the bottom of the flappy over bit, but top if the collar's popped up. Right. Now for this other side, I can play around with that point however I want. If I want a real 70s collar, I would do something like that. A regular collar is really just going to be a gentle curve like this. Modern day collars on suits tend to sort of clip off the end here, so I could even do that. And that basically just opens things up a little bit more for the um, triangle of the tie to be a bit more revealed. That's the joy of making clothes. We can, uh, we can do what we want, you know? I've decided to just mirror tops and bottoms to be exactly the same for traditional classic collar. Once again, I'm going to cut it out, add an extra inch to the second one, and tape them together. In the back, the collar flap is as tall, basically, as the collar band. But as I move forward, the collar band gets smaller while the flap gets bigger, hence the bell. Now, I like this sort of a bell shape. Some patterns will end up having that growth for the flap just on one side bit like that, you choose what you like. And there we go. That is my collar pattern sorted out. Again, this is how I like to pattern my collars. Feel free to play around. I know some folks like a perfectly even size collar band. Other folks curve their collars a bit more. The options are limitless. Play around until you get a version that you like. I'm going to cut out two copies of each of these from my interfacing and voila! Take the collar stands and deal with those first. This here will show you my day job. Going to press both of these down. The key is to make sure that I lift up and move rather than dragging the iron around because dragging is going to stretch the interfacing. Let's talk about interfacing real quick. There's paper stuff which is a bit cheaper and then the woven stuff which I'm using in this video. And I think it's worth the investment because what I've found over time with that paper stuff is it's a different material than the fabric and through washing and use it ends up creating this sort of wrinkling thing that just doesn't want to come out. Repeat with the second one and make sure I leave room for some seam allowance. I'm going to add my half an inch seam allowance all the way around. And then I'm going to trim them out. I've been using these scissors for over five years now. Still love them, highly recommend them. And if you get a pair, it helps me out because I receive a small commission for every sale. I can now set these two aside for now. For the top bits, I'm only going to press down one for now because we're going to put in collar stays. Once again, measure my half inch seam allowance. Trim this one out as well. Make a duplicate of that. Gorgeous. And then repeat one more time, except this time I only need to go in five inches. Set this one aside, and these three pieces are what make the collar stay side. This is the long piece, and the side that connects to the collar stand. On the end here, I'm going to measure up one and a half inches. 
Mark that spot. And on the bottom here, I'm gonna mark in four inches and then fold up using those two points as a guide. Press that to sit flat. Trim off the excess, leaving just some seam allowance. I'm gonna lay one of those short pieces on top. Flip that over to the other side. I lay one of my collar stays down. Make sure it's pointing right into the corner. And just mark off the edges. If you don't have any collar stays, just cut some out of an old plastic container. And then I'm just gonna sew right along the edge here, up that guide line to the very end that I just drew, and then down the other side along the guide again, and then just on the edge of the fold all the way to the end. And there we go. I repeat it on the other side, flip it over. I can trim off this excess fabric. And then finally, press down that last piece of interfacing. Flip this puppy over, put the other piece on top, right sides touching each other, and then run a stitch from the bottom here up to the top, all the way along, and back down the other side to here. Little secret, I'm doing exclusive content for YouTube members and patrons. Not only that, you get access to the group chat, where you can get help with your projects, talk to other like-minded folks, show off things you're making. You also get all these videos ad-free and early. And not only that, if you're a top-tier supporter, you can get your name in the video. Onwards. Pro tip, doing the corner stitch at a 45 degree angle means that when we turn this puppy around, it's gonna make for a crisper corner. Snip off the corners. Flip in the two sides, reach in with one finger and grab those two, and then just flip it around. A little wiggle. Press this all to lie nice and flat. And then run a top stitch along the side, top, and back down on the other side. Top flappy bit, done. Now it's time to attach it to the bottom. If a monthly subscription isn't your thing, tips are very much appreciated as well. So I'm gonna fold this in half, find my center, make a little crease there. Nice. I lay down one of them, right side facing up, lining up those two crease marks. Side note, a little off center, I should have Move that in a little bit. We all make mistakes. I take the other collar band bit, this time wrong side facing up. Once again, align it at the creases. I'm gonna sew from the center here, all the way to the other side, the top of the interfacing here, down the side of the interfacing, and stopping right here. And then repeat in the opposite direction as well. The reason I go from the center out like this is that it reduces the possibility of pieces shifting and being off-centered. Once again, I snip the corners and then flip it back around and press it to lay flat as well. That's the completed collar right there, which can now be attached to the neck hole. Join my newsletter and I'll come to you instead of you looking for me. Remember that neck measurement we took at the very beginning? I now like to walk it out all the way around to find out exactly where that's going to land. And then I like to just mark that out so I have a little bit of a guide where I'm gonna sew it. Because we're sewing basically a straight line onto a really tight curve, I find that I like to keep my seam allowance to just a quarter of an inch, both here and here. Otherwise, there's all kinds of puckering that's gonna happen. It's gonna make it a real pain to sew them together. 
This one for me right now is at a quarter inch, so I'm good there. The collar though, it's currently too big, so I'm gonna trim that one back. I'm gonna fold it in half and crease at the center back here. Same thing with the collar, fold it in half and crease the center. I'm gonna have the underside of the collar facing down and align those two creases and then just align both those pieces together, pinning them together to make sure everything is nice and evenly distributed and adjusting if needed. Once again, gonna start in the middle, work my way across to one side until it's sewn on, back to the middle and out in the opposite direction. To prevent puckering and other mishaps, I'm constantly grabbing the shirt layer underneath and sort of pulling it to the back to remove any folds or things that are going on. And then once I get to the end here, I fold back the top seam allowance and I'm gonna stitch right to the end there. Slow and steady wins the race. All right, boom, that has been sewn on. I'm gonna deal with the ends of the collar stamp next. I'm gonna take my plaque and I'm gonna fold it just above that seam there. I'm gonna fold again because I want this to be inside the top and bottom of my collar band. Pin that into place just on the top layer of the collar band. I wanna leave this one and then I'm going to flip collar band back inside out again and then using this stitch as a guide I'm going to sew in not more than an inch to close up the end here. Snip that corner off, pull out that pin and then just flip it back in the right direction again, pulling all of that out. And that is the corner sorted out. I'm gonna press these two sewn layers up and in first. Having a tailor's ham really helps to curve things out, you can make one yourself. I've got a whole tutorial available at this here uh, URL. Moving on to the other side, and I'm going to tuck over the seam allowance. Get that to lie flat and press it in place. To finish it off, I can run a stitch along the bottom here to connect that on, up the side, across the top, back down and connect where I left off. That is the collar complete. Editing corn, let's take a moment and Appreciate our handiwork. If you're having a bit of a tough time with this collar business, don't feel bad. I too had to do <laughs> a whole bunch of samples before I finally got it to a place where I felt comfortable filming it. And uh, I still wanna improve my technique, so we wouldn't be doing this if it was easy. You got this. You made it to the end, thank you. And uh, let me know down in the comments by telling me what you had for lunch. And uh, if you're still hungry, well, 
Allow the algorithm to serve up this here yummy video. It's a tie-in. It's like I've been planning this the whole time.